Rhino 7 is seen as the most significant upgrade of the history of this software. But which of these tools and workflows are relevant when working with Grasshopper? How can Shapediver users benefit from it? Today we will see 5 things that Rhino 7 can offer for Grasshopper and Shapediver users. Let's start with the most mentioned feature of Rhino 7, which is SAPD. SAPD is a new geometry type that can create editable, highly accurate shapes. And unlike other geometry types, SAPD combines freeform accuracy while still allowing quick editing. There are lots of new commands in Rhino 7. So here, if we go into this tab, we can see all of the SAPD tools where you can create all sorts of geometry cubes, spheres, cones, everything as a SAPD object. However, Grasshopper doesn't contain that many components to create SAPD objects from scratch. For now, we just have two new components. These components are the SAPD from mesh components and the multi-pipe component. In the SAPD from mesh component, we can have a mesh like this example that we have here of an abstract Rhino and convert that mesh into a SAPD component. So this mesh is used as the boundary of our SAPD object. And on the other hand, we have this one that is the multi-pipe component that takes a set of curves. In this case, we have this example with these three curves and join them into a SAPD object. So the connection here between these three is very smooth, very clean. So if we move our base geometry, we can see how our connection here changes, but is still very accurate, still very clean. So we can, for example, move this down and see how our connection is still works. And if we were to add other lines here, for example, to close our shape, then we could create very interesting results with this new component called the multi-pipe component. So let's select multiple curves and let's select these lines and we will get this result. Everything again with a very smooth and clean connection. Now let's move to other types of grasshopper components for SAPD. So SAPD geometry can be converted into NARVs or into meshes for further editing. So in this case, in grasshopper, we have this component called the mesh from SAPD component. So this component will take our SAPD object. In this case, we have the Rhino and this component will convert this Rhino into a very clean mesh. It is a quad mesh. And then, of course, we can use this mesh for further editing with any other mesh editing component. Like, for example, I have this one from the Mesh Plus plugin, and I can connect that into here, our mesh, and we can get very interesting results from this mesh, which comes from a SAPD object. Now we have also here another input, which is the density input, where we can change how much quads our mesh will create. So if we make this parametric, with an integer slider, then we can see how that changes our results. So we get more or less uh, density in our mesh. Then the next type of components that we have for SAPD are those ones for manipulating the SAPD objects. In this case, we have just one, which is SAPD Fuse. And this one allow us to create Boolean operations between the SAPD objects. So in this case, we're creating a Boolean operation of union, but we have also intersection, AB or BA, the same that we would do here with um, the intersect components. We have also something similar, but for SAPD components. In this case, we're taking two spheres, one is here and another is here as a mesh. Then here, through our SAPD, these components are being processed as a SAPD object instead of a mesh and then we get this result. So here actually the output is not a mesh, but a SAPD object. If we move, for example, our mesh a bit more closer, then we can see how that changes the way our union happens. The next type of components that we have is the ones that are normally called utilities, and these ones are to extract information, data from the SAPD objects, that in this case would be uh, the mesh itself. So we have the SAPD object here, and then we can extract the mesh in which the SAPD is contained. So it's different from converting a SAPD object into a mesh because this one is actually showing 
the boundary of our sub D component. So if, let me explain that by um, using our Rhino object here. So here we have the Rhino uh, sub D geometry. And on one hand, we were using this component, the mesh from sub D to create this very clean mesh. But if we instead use this uh, sub D control polygon, then we will get the original mesh. So in this case, this one was our original mesh. So we get that original mesh that is the one that contains the topology of our sub D object. And finally, we have also the sub D edges that is similar to, for example, deconstruct B-Wrap component, where we can get all the different uh, lines, curves, etc., that constitute the topology of this sub D object. Finally, don't forget that even though Grasshopper doesn't contain that many components to create sub D objects from scratch, we can anyways internalize sub D objects that come from Rhino. So here we have the sub D primitive object, we could create, for example, in Rhino um, a con. So we can create it here as a sub D object. And then internalize this object in Grasshopper. So we go right click, set one sub D, and then it will set this uh, con. And then we can use this uh, sub D object in Grasshopper for further addition. So here, for example, we can convert this sub D into a mesh or do any other operations. Just remember that if you want to use this in ShapeDiver, you have to right click in the sub D component and internalize it in Grasshopper so that it lives now in Grasshopper and is not referenced in Rhino. In general, this new geometry type sub D allow us to create organic shapes with high performance. And this translates in less computation time, which is important in ShapeDiver when creating cloud applications based on Grasshopper. Let's go to the second new feature that Rhino 7 offers, which is the quad remesh component or command in Rhino, which allow us to quickly create quad meshes from existing surfaces, solids, meshes, and even sub -dies. And this is ideal in ShapeDiver because this allows us to clean very messy meshes into clean ones with reduced amount of vertices and faces. So here, we have some examples that are shown in the official rhino3d.com website where we can see how all of these meshes, which were very messy and with a lot of quads, get reduced to a quad mesh with the most important topology of the geometry. If we go to Grasshopper, then in Grasshopper we have this new component, which is the quad remesh component. And here, for example, we have this bunny. So we can go from this bunny mesh to this other one, which contains a very clean mesh. If we see the difference in terms of the amount of uh, quads and vertices that we have, we can use a panel for that. And we can see that we went from 5,266 uh, vertices to just 888 vertices. So we have reduced in a big amount the amount of vertices that we have, which translates again in less computation time when processing these meshes in our cloud applications with ShapeDiver. Additionally to this component, we have another one called the Quad Remesh Settings, which allow us to play with the way our mesh gets created. The third new feature that we have in Rhino 7 is the Clash Detection, which allows us to detect when two objects coexist in the same space. So this is a computation that Rhino and Grasshopper were already able to do, but with a very low performance. So here in the example that we have, we have a rectangle that we populate with some points with a random seed here of one and a random seed here of two to get different points. From these points, we are creating some mesh spheres. And now we want to detect which spheres are collisioning into each other. So here in one side, we have a component that was already available in Grasshopper that is called the collision one many and we can find it here. And we used to have also the component collision many, many. The new one is the clash component that we all have here into the intersection tab in the physical area. However, as you can see here, this component is taking 7.3 seconds to compute. And it is giving us as output just a Boolean, which tell us true or false, depending on whether these objects are collisioning or not. 
However, the new clash component just takes 29 milliseconds and it gives us not just true-false if the object collisions, but also the location of where these collisions are happening. For ShapeDiver users, this new component also means less computation time when we want to create cloud applications where collision detection, clash detection is necessary. The fourth new feature is a single line font, and this is something that has been requested for a long time for Grasshopper and Rhino users, because single line fonts are essential for CNC and laser cutting. Because when using single line fonts, we reduce the amount of time that the machines, the laser machines or CNC machines, have to use to engrave in our material. So for example, here we have this text curve component, which comes from the Squid plugin. And we can use this new um, single line font. Here you can see the name of this single line font to produce our uh, curves in Grasshopper. So this single line font is available everywhere and you can use it with any other um, plugin that you know that can produce curves from text. So the difference is that here, for example, we are using this font and we can see clearly that it's a single line font, a single path. But if we were to use a different font, so for example, the regular Arial font, then we will see the difference with a double path in our text, which again is not ideal when using CNC or laser machines. For ShapeDiver users, this is in general good news if you want to export manufacturing files from your cloud applications. And finally, the five thing that you can do with Rhino 7 is exporting and importing in new formats or in improved formats. In terms of Grasshopper, this is mainly for ShapeDiver users who will be able to export and import in all of these formats that Rhino 7 supports. So right now we are limited to what our components let us do. So the ShapeDiver geometry input, the ShapeDiver image input, and the ShapeDiver text file input allow us to import in a few formats that Rhino 7 supports. So if we double click in this component, it let us know that we can import just into Grasshopper, DXF and OBJ files. If we double click in the ShapeDiver image input, then we can see all of the formats that are supported in this case. And finally, the same happens with the text file that also show us all of the formats that we can import in Grasshopper. However, with the new plugin that we will be releasing soon for ShapeDiver, now all of these formats will be directly connected to all of the formats that Rhino 7 directly supports. So in general, these are good news when we want to connect our Grasshopper definitions and cloud applications to other external software. So these are five things that the new Rhino 7 release brings to Grasshopper and ShapeDiver users. And if you want to try them out, please contact us so that we can connect your ShapeDiver account to the new beta Rhino 7 system. If you want to know more about what are the next steps between ShapeDiver and Rhino 7, please visit the blog post link that I will leave down in the description. And this is all for today. I hope you learned something new. And if you want to get more content about Grasshopper and ShapeDiver, don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. And I will see you in the next one.